stone came home to his wife and family after serving in the conflict overseas and the time that he served had shattered all his nerves and left a little shrapnel in his knee did you know sam stone uh no just ran with home huh just ran with home that's it yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you know somebody who was a sam stone oh uh, well it was more or less uh uh um i was just kind of disillusioned after i got out of the army you know and uh that's what it started out to be and and uh that's the way the song fell together. He was driving around the Chicago western suburbs, delivering the mail with like nothing to do but think. You know, Prime tells stories and Anne Carroll told stories about him like busting in the door after work to write things down so he wouldn't forget. You know, um, that's how Sam Stone came into the world. Um, he had kind of thought it up in his truck and came running in the door after work and couldn't find anything. So he grabbed an insert from a pair of pantyhose. Um, and and wrote the lyrics to Sam Stone down on that, that cardboard insert. I wrote that one. I remember writing it on the mail route. I couldn't wait to get home that day so I get the guitar out and see if it actually works on the guitar. One thing he would say about this song is that he did not intend to write about um, a veteran addicted to heroin, right? Like, obviously, he had experience in the service, and then the idea of this person battling with addiction and kind of being left behind was sort of the saddest thing that he could think of at the time. And that really fit the feeling and the sentiment of the song. And so that's kind of where he went with it. I didn't sit down to write a song about, uh, uh, about a veteran on uh, heroin. It was just the two, uh, the two things, uh, like, well, heroin, uh, usually doesn't end any place. And, uh, and it was kind of, uh, there's kind of a, just a, a futile feeling, you know, when you're in a service. Um, I wasn't in Vietnam. I was, uh, they sent me to Germany for two years. And, uh, but the, throughout the whole army, even when you're in, over in Germany, it was just, uh, uh, you didn't feel like you're doing too much there. Like you had no business there. And, uh, it was that plus the image of somebody on heroin, and that's the only reason I combined the two more more than trying to write a song about a veteran on heroin yeah. in it. And uh, it was kind of strange that, that it ended up. Now there's uh, a lot of them on heroin. But the morphine eased the pain, and the grass grew around his brain, and gave him all the kind. He lacked with a purple heart and a monkey on his back. There's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money goes. Jesus Christ died for nothing, I suppose. Kind of discovered the the album that we did later on, you know, when some of the songs became very popular, you know. And I, I barely remember. There's a hole in Daddy's arm where all the money goes. I mean, it's what line, you know? As a writer, I mean, I I wasn't a writer at that point, but I really admired writers, you know. So, uh, yes, and man, this guy's a great writer, you know. Oh, hey, what's the song? Sam Stone. You know, I understood the first line of Sam Stone came home to his wife and family, and I guess it was his daddy that there's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money go. That's the only two lines I can remember in that song. And I don't know why they stuck with me, but for some reason they did. I had those two lines. That's what started the whole song off, was I had that, that sweet song, Never Last Too Long, Broken Radios, and there's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money goes. And I was kind of thinking of, uh, in a way, uh, like some uh, political cartoon, like the humor they use in political cartoons. Um, and I had, I had just kind of a picture of a, of a, of a fellow uh, uh, shooting money into his arm, you know, with like a rainbow of money just falling down into his arm. And that's where, that's where I got that line. 
the rest of the song mm. develop out of it, it seems. Yeah. Uh, it seems if the first couple of ideas of the song. Mm. Like, then I'd only have as hard a time. Like, that was one yeah. of the easiest songs I ever wrote. Really? Because after yeah. I had that, those two lines, I, the rest of the song just poured out of it. Every time I saw John perform that song live, you know, usually I'd be standing side stage and it would just bring tears to my eyes every time. Some people could spend their whole life trying to write a song like that and never even like touch it. But yeah, it's, I mean, Sam Stone is like the perfect example of being able to put a mirror up to the human experience and make it something that like, that everybody can relate to and everybody can understand. You know, it's, is it an anti-war song? Yeah, probably. But, you know, a lot of people wouldn't look at it that way because it's just so personal and you just get such a vivid picture of, of who he's talking about. And it's both sympathetic to, you know, it's a, it's an anti-war song, but it's also just this very personal ballad and, you know, shows you kind of how people are treated in that experience. That's probably the most powerful song I've ever heard about a returning vet from Vietnam or any, any badass war like that. Uh, it just, you, you, it really strikes home. Again, one of those really poignant, um, touching songs about everyday people, right? Because this happens all the time in America, but no one had spotlighted it. Um, he was really the first person to do it. And he toyed with controversy with this song, right? But it resonated with people because he was illuminating something that needed to be illuminated. And that was sort of his brilliance. And again, he was like 20 years old when he was writing um, these songs, which is crazy to think about. That's my all time favorite. Like every time on the road, we'd play that song or he'd play that song. I'd cry. I've got more videos of that song on my phone than any other song. I relate to that so much. Um, my cousin, who was more like a brother to me, Michael Ruark, um, came back after six tours in Iraq, Afghanistan, and suffered from PTSD and um, took his own life. But um, like the the way that he described coming back from from that situation, like it it, it just it was exactly the same thing as what um, my cousin went through. And it, it also strikes me that 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 song could be as relevant then and. Um, like we haven't learned anything really like, um, you know, illegal smile drugs are legal now, but we still have the same problems when it comes to how we treat our soldiers and, and the return. It's a tragedy that that song is still so important, but I'm grateful that it exists. You know, Sam Stone's welcome home didn't last too long. He went to work. When he'd spent his last dime And Sammy took to stealing When he got that empty feeling For a hundred dollar habit Without overtime And the gold rolled through his veins Like a thousand railroad trains That he chose While the kids ran around Wearing other people's clothes Me and about six of my buddies All got drafted at the same time January 66 That was about the time they went from 20,000 troops in Vietnam to 500,000 You know And they said it was still a conflict <laughs> And we were just over there <laughs> protecting things like Half a million troops but well, we all got drafted and they sent some of us to Vietnam. I, they sent me to Germany and a couple of, one of the other guys to Germany too. And some of them they kept in the States. But when we all got out uh, a couple of years later, uh, everybody had changed quite a bit, you know. A lot of changes. Were, this was the end of 67, beginning of 68. And uh, I couldn't quite piece it together what was so different about it, whether it was just being away and growing up or something or or what, but like uh, a lot of the guys had come home from Nam and I had a buddy come home from Germany a uh, month after he got out. I called his house and he was in a veterans hospital having shock treatments, you know? He just went bananas. And uh, I, kn I knew it when I seen all of his shoes was pointed the same way under his bed that he wasn't really out of the army. You know, had those hangers 
All right, well, I said, oh, oh he's in trouble. Somebody blew Reveille right now, he'd run out the window. And uh, a couple of the other guys just had, had, had drug problems and stuff. And of course, I don't, I believe that just about everybody knew a brother or a husband or son or something that didn't come back at all. But a lot of the ones that came home, it never seemed like they came back. You know, they, a lot of them still ain't home. And uh, there were no parades or nothing. You know, and all of, all of us, I'm 38 now, but all of us kind of grew up with Audie Murphy movies and stuff like that. And I used to jump on, after I saw the Helen back, I passed an Oldsmobile car lot on the way home and I jumped up on the hood and I shot everybody on the street, you know. But when our work comes along, all of a sudden they just want to be ashamed of it. And, ain't got no parades or nothing, so it was kind of weird. I wrote that song to kind of explain it to myself, you know, what the feeling was. But life, it lost its fun, and there was nothing to be done. But trade his house that he bought on the GI Bill. Far flag draped casket on a local hero's hill. There's a hole in daddy's arm where all the money goes. Jesus Christ died for nothing, I suppose. Little pitchers have big ears, don't stop to count the years. Sweet songs never last too long on broken radios. It's just like 101 in songwriting. If anybody wants to think about writing a topical song, like go listen to Sam Stone and then probably put the guitar down and realize you're never going to be that good.